And today, we'll be starting in on my gantry crane build. Now, I've been wanting a proper A-frame gantry like this for years now, but uh, since last summer I bought a house with a shop, I figured now was the time to build one because obviously I didn't want to make one of these things knowing full well I'd have to move it with me somewhere. But anyway, I'm going to build this thing to be extremely strong, as in ridiculously overbuilt, even by my standards, or so I hope, because there's really no such thing as a positive outcome when something like this comes crashing down or even has minor problems so what I've gone and done is I've bought some uh, 2x5 square tube I know it's uh, kind of an odd size but my steel yard had it on special and I figured it'd be about perfect for this uh, some 2x5 square tube with a 3 16 inch wall thickness and cut it to length with the trade jan model 125 bandsaw and uh, then when we finally have all these pieces laid out, measured out, and, uh, and cut out, I'll be welding two pieces of the 2x5 stock and one piece of 2x4 heavy wall square tube together so that we then have a massive 5 inch by 6 inch overhead beam. And the really cool thing about this design is there's multiple vertical support sections on it as well, just uh, the, uh, the inside sidewalls of these pieces of square tube that kind of match up and add a lot more strength to this design, which should hopefully be able to hold thousands and thousands of pounds. And just like that, we had this thing all nice and welded out. Honestly, it did go pretty quickly, and uh, with the help of the spray art capabilities of this machine, we were able to, uh, to enjoy a very nice quick travel speed, and we also put out some welds I'm extremely happy with that fused uh, deeply into our material and should do everything that we need them to do. So uh, with that being said, we now had the upper beam on this gantry fully welded out and ready to go. And now it is time for us to build what I refer to as the carriage that's going to work with this contraption. Now the carriage is simply a, uh, a roller assembly with a hook on the end of it and it rolls back and forth over the top of the beam. And although you can go out and buy these pre-made, I personally couldn't find one that would fit this size and type of beam. And honestly, I wasn't very impressed with the quality of the store about ones I saw anyway so I figured I'd just go ahead and get some quarter inch plate and make my own now almost every part of this assembly is cut from flat plate and then welded together and honestly I like it that way So from there, I decided to turn down some pins which will serve as the rollers in this carriage and let the carriage itself ride side to side over the beam, especially when there's weight placed upon it. And uh, initially, I just used some one inch pins with our one inch pillow block bearings, but I quickly realized that one and a quarter inch rollers turned down on the ends of our lathe to fit into the one inch pillow block bearings would be much, much stronger and more resilient. And honestly, I'm pretty glad that I went this route on the build. Now, once these were secured in place, it was time to start welding together the plates to make up the rest of the carriage.
Now I've built the sides of this carriage from two sheets of quarter inch plate, each placed against each other face to face and welded thoroughly on the back side so we have a lot more support than one piece of quarter inch steel could provide, although I am fairly certain that this might be just a little bit on the side of overkill. And once our carriage was welded out and fully secure, it was time to start working on the nice long legs of this gantry. Now they're nine feet tall and probably the simplest part of this entire build because all I had to do here was to join them to the nine foot feet of the gantry with a conventional perpendicular placement, then run a piece of two by four rectangular tube up the side of these legs, which will act as a stiffener and help to prevent side to side movement. And uh, from there, pretty much all we had to do was weld on some 45 degree braces, and later we added some plates that are cut out with the plasma cam for bolting on the casters. Well, now that that's all done, I guess it's about time to start thinking of final assembly. That's how you know it's going to be a pretty awesome Monday. is that the AHP took it like a champ. I mean, this thing got pounded, but it took it like a champ. This machine caught the full weight of an estimated uh, somewhere between four and 600 pounds of gantry falling on it from about four feet up, and it bounced off the face of this machine, which launched the unit backwards, and then it landed on the machine end of the MIG gun, which survived, although the MIG connection on the unit was unfortunately damaged beyond repair. And the better news is that no one got hurt in this misadventure, and it's by far the most serious welding related accident I've had in more than seven years in the field, so it really could have been a lot worse. Now, you may be wondering, how exactly did this happen? Well, it, uh, it happened a little too fast to really realize what happened at the time, but luckily we did catch it on video. But essentially, as some of you know, you, uh, you can't actually see the end of the forks on this tractor from the operator's seat, and I was just trying to get lined up to scoop this thing up, and I thought that I had more space between the end of the forks and the beam than I really did. I wasn't actually trying to pick this up when it happened, and uh, my buddy Seth was behind the camera at the time, and he thought I could see the forks, and I thought, like I said, that I was further away than I actually was. So, that's that. This is uh, a good example of how common sense and good general safety procedures can keep people from getting hurt because everyone in and around the building at the time when this happened knew better than to stand near this beam when I was getting in position to lift it. It does suck, but it could have been a lot worse. Now, the other problems we're having is that uh, unfortunately two of the, uh, the pillow block bearings were completely crushed in the impact. I mean this thing had a lot of weight and those things have some pretty heavy duty nice uh, cast iron housings and they just completely shattered. So we have to remove the entire carriage off of this gantry and this thing wasn't meant to be removed. It's pretty much just on there permanently, you know, hence the bearings and the large rollers and everything. So, unfortunately what that meant is I had to come in here like you see me doing and, uh, and slice off these end caps and then we had to remove the gantry and although only two of the bearings were damaged, we actually replaced all four because uh, anytime there's a chance there's some unseen damage on anything like this, it's going to be used for lifting overhead. As most of y'all already know, it's a really, really good idea 
to uh, go ahead and replace anything that might have been affected. And so that got the uh, the carriage itself fixed up, and uh, and the beam itself was fine. I mean, it didn't even phase that beam. That's <laughs> probably could have gotten gotten away with just two of those uh, rectangular tube sections there, and still been fine. But overall, things did hold up pretty well. And uh, and after an extra couple hours of work that I wasn't really planning on or wanting to do, quite frankly, we uh, we had this thing once again ready to uh, to be installed. And so from there, it was pretty much just time to, uh, to bolt on these casters. Now, these are rated to hold 4,800 pounds for the set, and I believe that they are the weak point of the entire design. But I've also been told by quite a few people that anytime you buy casters or something like this, they are greatly, greatly underrated for insurance reasons. But uh, you didn't hear that from me, and like with anything, if you guys do decide to build something like this, you know, understand there's some pretty severe risks that go along with it if something goes wrong, and do anything at your own risk, of course. But uh, yeah, we got these casters bolted on, and then I took some time and painted this thing up, and just like that, it was time for us to start lifting some pretty heavy stuff with it. And in today's episode of Super Sketch with Stretch, we are going to be attempting to lift this table, and hopefully I don't die. So this is the first thing we've ever tried to lift with this crane, and uh, I know people are like, oh, it's just a, he's just lifting a welding table. Not just any welding table. This top is solid half inch plate. It weighs over 500 pounds by itself. Plus the vise is about 120, 130. That's also made almost entirely out of half inch plate. And down below you'll see just loads of scrap uh, steel drops down there. So if I had to guess, I'd say this whole thing probably weighs about 1,500 pounds or so. So it won't be that bad of, a, uh, of, an, of an initial test. And to lift this, we're using this uh, this Tough Tug brand, uh, what most people refer to as a come along. And this thing is really well made. It's the nicest made one I've ever seen. And it, uh, it has a 3,000 pound lifting capacity and a 6,000 pound pulling capacity. So. Look at that. Table appears to be in the air. I think one wheel's rubbing a little bit. Awesome. First test, complete success. Crazy heavy. 
like that we have one completely functional very sturdy very yellow gantry so yeah I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with how this came out you know I set out to build out uh, the aforementioned and I feel like that's definitely what we have here there's really nothing about it that I don't like I'm super thrilled with how it came out and uh, we got to lift all kinds of maybe marginally sketchy stuff with it but we proved it's solid and, uh, and everything works as it should. So this has been a blast put together. I'd really like to thank you all for watching my video. And um, as always, have fun, stay safe, build this at your own risk, and I'll see you next time.